This video contains discussions or depictions of assault, violence, transphobia, and substance use. Viewer discretion is advised. I was being sarcastic. Hey besties, we good? Okay, perf. First, a few housekeeping things. As I'm sure some of you know, today is my birthday, so feel free to leave gifts or offerings or sacrifices in the collection plate. I'll be sending it around later. Also, Miss Lane, if you could stop ironically drawing me throwing the first brick at Stonewall because I called myself a queer elder once in passing, that would be amazing. It's iconic, but it's a little bit mean. Mm -hmm. So the other day in the hallway, I heard a lot of chatter about Mr. Potato Head, which was a bit shocking because who even talks about Mr. Potato Head? What is there to say? It's a horrible toy. And frankly, it's kind of ugly. But like people were passionately discussing this gendered Spudman like it mattered. So obviously I had to Google what was going on. After too much wine and way more time on Twitter than my therapist recommended, I decided we'd probably all need to talk about this. So we're gonna. Well, I see I'm the only one who still believes in arriving fashionably late. Miss Griffin, please sit down. We're trying to watch the screen come down. Okay, there we go. Most of us know what virtue signaling is, but let's break it down real fast. A virtue is a lived value, a value that is put into practice. For example, we can all value generosity, but not all of us have the virtue of generosity, which is to show generosity in our daily lives. So just because you value something does not mean it's a virtue you possess. Liberals may value progress and open-mindedness is a virtue they aspire to embody by being willing to learn and change their mind. Conservatives may value tradition, and patriotism is a virtue they aspire to embody by preserving American traditions and ideals. Leftists may value community, and solidarity is a virtue they aspire to embody by putting ego aside in order to work towards change. Every group has a generally agreed upon set of values and virtues, and every group signals these to each other in some way or another. I could say non-binary people are valid, and you'd get that I'm also saying that I'm down to clown with binary trans people, and that I'm here for trans liberation and gay rights, probably that I support other marginalized people's liberation as well. Although sometimes that one can be a little bit iffy for some people. You extrapolate virtues from values. I say non-binary people are valid, and people will also understand that I'm saying I'm progressive. Phrases like this can convey a lot more than the phrase itself does without the history and the context surrounding it. It's the way saying MAGA doesn't read as just a vague sentiment of you wanting to make America great again. It meant you were a Republican, a Trump supporter, a nationalist. It read as you saying you value tradition and rejected change. Maybe it also meant you wanted to return to a time when the oppressed having a voice was nothing but a pipe dream. But a lot of the time, the expression of these sentiments manifests in a way that may come across as disingenuous to someone in another group. It's usually situations like these where the term virtue signal gets thrown around. The people most accused, in my opinion, of being virtue signalers are progressives, leftists, and liberals. This, I think, is simply a result of those groups outwardly presenting as being the bleeding hearts. They care, and showing that you care and admonishing those who don't is basically saying you're a better person than them. You value empathy, and you're displaying your virtue by publicly talking about how much you care. And for some reason, 
that's a really bad thing to some people. Like, gee, I hope you don't hate me for not hating trans people. Gee, I hope this won't lower your opinion of me. As if their opinions of us could get me lower. The right spends a lot of time trying to dismiss people fighting for change as virtue signaling. They give a little hand wave and a laugh and that's all they need. Why do the right need to argue the actual content of the claim of someone on the left if the person on the left doesn't even really care about it? They're just virtue signaling. If we don't care, why should they? We'll get into that. But the thing is, for all the things that the right claims is virtue signaling, all the trans women are women's and pronouns in the bios, the right virtue signals just as much, if not more, than anyone else. This has been made strikingly clear in the way they react to absolutely anything involving trans people. Because besties, they lose their flipping minds. For example, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, but we need to discuss the case of company formerly known as Mr. Potato Head made several potato toys with different potato sexes. Mr., Mrs., and a little baby with no gender? So decades after having multiple potato toys that were Potato Heads, they changed the company name to Potato Heads. They still sell Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, but the brand name is more accurate to what they sell. It's weird and unnecessary to gender your potato toy company name, but I'm sure they were trying to be woke in an attempt to make more money. The change, if it's a result of anything, is a result of capitalism. Nobody is buying their ugly potato toy, so they needed to make headlines, which Ben helped them do. But the change causes no harm to any anyone. <laughs> but it's change, and if you're Ben Shapiro, change is bad. Bigotry annihilated. Now, any child of any gender can look at a potato head and dream of growing up to be a plastic spheroid with interchangeable parts. Mrs. Potato Head has also been killed off. She'll be replaced by an asexual can of Pringles. Society is not truly free or safe until all potato heads can use the planter of their choice. What if Potato Head identifies as a squash, though? <sighs> What bigotry has been annihilated, Benifer? Nobody even brought up bigotry or gender identity or sexuality, except for Ben, because Ben wanted to publicly signal his disapproval to his followers. He finds this change ridiculous because he values facts over feelings. Except there were no facts here to defend. Potatoes don't have genders, they don't have sexes, and the only one upset was Benjamin himself. I understand that inanimate objects don't have sexualities, but let's pull a Benny and pretend that they do. I can't ignore the fact that he thinks Pringles cans aren't currently already unsexual. Like he finds them pretty horny. Ben Shapiro looks at Pringles cans and thinks, damn. I bet that thing has so many dirty little thoughts. Like, nobody cares about potato head toys but the people that work there and apparently middle-aged right-wing men. And they care. They really care. Or at least, they have to pretend they do. This human Q-tip even went as far as to say that this was a reason to initiate secession from the United States. That may be the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Whoever you are, Mike Deshay, May you find some peace, girl. May you find some peace. It, they might say they're just making fun of woke brands, and they are making fun of woke brands that are jumping on the trans rights choo-choo. But a lot of leftists and trans people also hate when companies do that. So what's the difference here? The difference is that it's not all that the right is doing. They're also virtue signaling. Their virtue is their bigotry, specifically their transphobia. Now, Benadryl Shania knows that he's doing this. He does it for a living. He profits off of virtue signaling. 
He sells Virtue Signal merch. Not this one. Th this one's not from him. Now, personally, I try not to Virtue Signal. I'm just much more likely to Vice Signal. That's Daria's life mission. Same. But by using this ridiculous decision made by a capitalist company that trans people couldn't give a fig about and didn't have a say in, he gets to signal his transphobia and show how strong and virtuous he is. He isn't swayed or silenced by the trans agenda. No, he's brave because he stands up for what he believes in, which is that God made exactly two genders. Man and McRib. Eve was trans. Fight me. Shalipa was so intent on making sure people knew how he felt about this that he had to tweet about it five times. Is he really that in his feelings about it, or was he just trying to show how much he detests trans people that he couldn't get it out of his mind? The right's obsession with virtue signaling their transphobia is constant. It's daily. And it's only ever one joke. Gee, that was fun, but in the future, let's save time and just roll around on gravel. They will forever claim that they're not overreacting, not making Death Stars out of pod racers, that their reaction is to real threats, but they can't ever back that up with data. I'm sure if there was an actual leftist mob being that upset about Mr. Potato Head, it'd be fairly easy to prove with receipts. If there's an angry mob, there'd be a trail of evidence. But when it comes to trans people, grifters like Ben Shapiro and Stephen Chowder don't care about facts. They just want to express their feelings. And not only that, but they think we should care too. As much as them. Why? I sure shit don't care about how they feel about trans people as long as they aren't using it to rile up hate and influence policy using propaganda tactics. Why don't I personally care? Because fags don't care about your feelings, Ben. You haven't earned it. If it weren't terrifying how much they want to restrict the freedoms of trans people, it would almost be funny to see this fucking leprechaunic Rumpelstiltskin huff and puff over a couple of Irish apples. This would be an interesting look into the mind of an obsessive reactionary if he wasn't denigrating and minimizing the fight for trans liberation to line the pockets in his young adult bootcut gap jeans. You're officially ordered to take a fashion sabbatical until you get your priorities straight. Yeah, worry about what's in your own change room. And if he wasn't actively normalizing using trans people as a punchline in his poorly crafted comedy that he recycles and repeats because the joke doesn't matter, only the virtue behind it does, maybe I wouldn't have had to take time out of my busy life of alcoholism and mental illness to make this video. But I did. Because they do. Look at this tweet from Stephen Crowler on one of the happiest days of his life. He found out his wife and him are having twins. This was especially meaningful, one could assume, because of their miscarriage the year before. And what did he do with this information? How did he celebrate? How did he let the world know how relieved he was that his wife and children were in good health? To tell the people about his pride in being part of a traditional American family? By using the announcement of his children as an opportunity to virtue signal his transphobia on Twitter. That he's going to raise his kids the old-fashioned American way that leads to very patriotic increased suicide rates. His kids aren't even born yet and he's already using them as a cudgel against trans people for no reason other than because he wants to show people that he will. What possible other reason could he have for posting that shitty attempt at a joke? The only way he could have signaled any louder would be if he got Commissioner Gordon to shine a symbol into Gotham's night sky. And yet these men will accuse other people of virtue signaling as if either of these two should ever have a stone to throw in those grubby little man hands. A lot of the things they do are just meant to show people their values without stating them. Because if you got on Twitter every day and just said, trans people make me uncomfortable and I don't respect them as people and I'm obsessed with telling everyone I meet about it, I can't stop. It's, ah. You get quite a different reaction than just being like, <laughs> sorry if I misgendered you, Mrs. Potato Head. They need to pretend they're fighting a war against those who would wish to destroy their way of life and not fighting against people's rights to live their own. That's how they make their sales. But they never have the receipts. They'll claim that if trans people are allowed in the right bathroom, assault will go up. So they're the virtuous protectors guarding the weak women's is and children's is who can't defend themselves. Not only that, but it's a lie. When trans people are allowed to use the correct bathroom, violent assaults go down because trans people are much more likely to be assaulted because they're using the wrong bathroom. You know, 
the bathroom Ben Shapiro would want them to. He's advocating for an ideology that provably and demonstrably increases physical and sexual assault and rape of minors. But those are facts, and they get in the way of his feelings about trans people, so he tries to obfuscate them with claims that he's following science. He's not. Science is not just biology. Science is statistics. It's looking at the world around you and understanding it through evidence. And Ben ignores most of the evidence when it comes to trans people. He feels that it's not right to let trans women in the women's bathroom. And he let those feelings overshadow the fact that his position is the one that leads to women and children being assaulted, even by his definition of women. And the real truth is that a statement being virtue signaling doesn't impact the validity of the statement itself. But it is a good way to try and invalidate something you can't argue against. So it's really easy for him to just say, oh, trans women are women, nice virtue signal. But then he can go on and say, trans women aren't women, and that's somehow not virtue signaling. So if you see someone call something virtue signaling, and then they never address the actual content of the thing they're claiming is virtue signaling, remember how lazy they're being and trying to trick you. It's the emperor trying to show you his brand new clothes with his Johnson & Johnson flapping freely in the breeze. Like, yes. It's easy to fall for a lie when the lie is simpler. It's kind of the point. It's because it requires less work to wrap your head around than the truth. If everyone can see the clothes but me, then the clothes must be there. So what do we do when confronted by these obvious attempts to use lies to delegitimize and memify trans liberation? How do we challenge our own beliefs and bigot- Yes, Daria? Stand firm for what you believe in until and unless logic and experience prove you wrong. Remember, when the emperor looks naked, the emperor is naked. The truth and a lie are not sort of the same thing. I literally couldn't have said it better myself. In an extremely boring and poorly written editorial, Ben talks about a lawn sign that's clearly virtue signaling. I agree on that. But he goes on to tip his hand in part of his piece. By phrases like science is real, the sign owner conveys that if you attribute California wildfires to anything beyond Trumpian evil and climate change, you deny science, which is anti-scientific, of course. That's why Jill Biden tweeted hashtag vote for science. Cynics might ask whether she believes a woman can become a man. What, you may ask? Oh, oh, that's me. What, you may ask, is the difference between phrases like science is real and facts don't care about your feelings. Both are vague statements meant to signify a value. That following evidence and facts is a virtue, and the person who's saying this possesses that virtue. And what is a pin tweet, if not the lawn sign of your Twitter account? Lawn signs don't solve problems, but they do make us feel good, which is what politics are supposed to achieve nowadays in the absence of actual solutions. Perhaps at some point we might ask why politics make us feel so rotten these days. Ben. Benny. Bonicula. We do ask why politics makes us feel so rotten these days. And we have an answer. It's because regressives with reactionary agendas will shoehorn their feelings into everything they can. Trans people's lives, potato toys, Pringle scans. And then we're left to stand here and think to ourselves, why do they bother signaling their virtues when they have none? Okay, kids, uh, I forgot about the presents. Just leave them by the door on your way out. And Miss Morgendorfer, please lock the door behind you. I don't want to be disturbed. I have a Skype call with my therapist an hour and this room isn't going to hotbox itself. So I'm off to study hall to finish your nap. You know me too well. Hey besties, when did you get here? Here's the deal. I'm gonna do just a couple of these short little videos to prevent burning out from those comprehensive feature like videos that almost killed me, but I have one of those in the works still too. But like, actually, I just want to thank everyone for their comments and engagement with me on this channel. It's exactly the amount of whelming it should be. I am evenly whelmed, properly whelmed, and I feel whelmed and loved. I do see a lot of comments that even though you have notifications set up for this channel, YouTube never notifies you no matter what. And I'm trying to figure that one out. There's also been comments that you're shocked, appalled even, that I only have 10,000 subscribers, but girl, I can't do anything about that. But you can. 
like and comment, subscribe, feel the Al Gore's rhythm. Go forth into the World Wide Web like the baby spiders at the end of Charlotte's Web. Share with my content. Join my Patreon. Tell your favorite creators that are doing lefty things like I do that you'd love if we collab or they should check me out. Or we could all just chill here at 10K because honestly, 10K is like 11K more than I ever expected when I started this channel. I have no formal training in anything. I taught myself how to do this because I think it's fun. But I'm still some rando that makes like $10 a year at my service job. The fact that anyone likes anything that I'm doing and that I'm kind of good at and passionate about is wild to me. And I'm proud of where I am here with all y'alls. Being grateful for the things that you have is a virtue and I have so much great fortitude, it's coming out of my butts. Look at my virtue, look at it, it's me.